You're gonna have to roll up your sleeves for this month's pantry chat because honey, we've got a lot of ground to cover. So go ahead and grab yourself a big old cup of something and honey, strap in. We're gonna build off the strategic sales and purchases from last month. But now the farmer's markets are back open and your garden is likely in the greenhouse or the ground. And we've got new seasonal fruits and vegetables that need to be canned or fermented. The landscape of your kitchen is about to change a lot. So let's start hashing out a reasonable plan to get you headed in the right direction this month. And that you includes me. This month, I have a couple of projects that you can scrape together with 30 minutes here and there throughout the week or the weekend. As usual, let's start with this month's grocery guide. Remember, the best way to eat nutritiously and on a budget is to stick with produce that's in season. And in the month of April, that's artichokes, asparagus, avocados, beets, broccoli, cabbages, carrots, cauliflower, grapefruit, greens, leeks, mushrooms, onions, peas, rhubarb, and strawberries. Oh, that is such a delicious list. And since they're all in season, those are going to be the items that you're going to see splashed all over the front of your sales flyers. Now, yes, you want to buy those items for your weekday meals, but a portion of those ingredients need to be headed straight to your pantry. So take any of those ingredients that I just named. Yes, you're going to enjoy it fresh, but then you also need to be thinking about your preservation plan. Are you going to can it, ferment it, freeze it, dehydrate it, a combination of both or whatever, so that you have a surplus? So here's my game plan for that list of ingredients. For the asparagus, I don't particularly enjoy it canned because the texture softens up a bit, but fermented asparagus keeps its crunch. It's delicious and it takes just minutes to make. Start by preparing your asparagus. Now, a lot of sources will tell you that asparagus has a built-in natural breaking point. Hold up a spear horizontally and break off the end where you see it. The problem is this approach doesn't really work better or faster than the more obvious method, slicing off the ends of a bunch of asparagus spears all at once. Now, I always hook my scrap bin off of a drawer because I'm going to save the ends to make asparagus pesto. This fermented recipe is simple. Just think of the flavors that you want to rub off in your brine. Mix together your salt solution and have fun sprinkling with garlic cloves or fresh thyme, peppercorns, and chili flakes. These delicious spears will keep for one month in the fridge and keep that satisfying crunch. Fresh carrots, I'm definitely gonna can my own. You can either dice them or opt to buy the baby carrots and just toss them in your canner. In season carrots are super sweet and canned in chicken broth, like I do almost everything, or a brown sugar syrup, mm, they are delish. Don't scrunch up your face when I recommend this next ingredient for your pantry, okay? But if you do, it won't be the first time I've gotten the look. I'm just hoping to prove you wrong. You've got to try canning carrot soup. I made an entire video and I have the full recipe on my blog. I'll be making roasterfuls of carrot soup all April. Yeah, cause those are the jars my mom and dad are gonna be reaching for for a lot. I am a mushroom lover, I always have been. They are my favorite pizza topping. I love them in soups, rice, casseroles, omelets, I mean anything. And once you can them yourself, you'll never want them any other way because you can have fresh mushrooms that are marinating and beef or French onion soup and that taste is divine. All right, so another thing is onions and they're pretty cheap to get year round, but this time of year in the grocery store, they just look a lot better. Now, the first way I'm gonna preserve some of my onions is to ferment them. Having sliced onions in the fridge allows you to quickly add some to a sandwich or salad topping, two items I make a lot more with warmer weather. I'll use the same flavor notes I use for the asparagus, but I'm going to add the sprigs from my fresh fennel bulbs, which is an ingredient in a soup I'm making. Fermented onions will keep for two months in the fridge. Darling, in my home, I'm hard pressed to find a meal that doesn't start with a cast iron skillet, onions, and garlic. Which is why I have three onion recipes here on the channel. So yeah, those are gonna be the three onion recipes that I'm gonna be busy making the rest of the month. Spring is strawberry season, and seeing them for the first time at the farmer's market just makes me so happy. Now last month, March, was frozen food month, so I still had a couple of bags of frozen strawberries from that sale. But if you have any jams or jellies that are strawberry-based, honey, start making them. Now with April being Easter and all, you're gonna see some eggs on sale. Yeah, eggs keep in the fridge for up to six weeks. But did you know that you can freeze your eggs and they'll last for over a year? Yep, that's why I like to buy my eggs when they're cheap or on sale and freeze them for later. And I've shown you plenty of times before how they're a perfect stand-in anytime you need a scrambled egg for fresh eating or baking. Plus, you can keep nearly 40 eggs in a single gallon-sized bag on your freezer door. Here's how you do it. 
I might not have chickens, but this is how I keep a stockpile of eggs. Use silicone baking cubes to crack and pour in one egg. I'll have to do this a few times until I get some more of these trays, so I'll just keep my extra eggs in the fridge using this extra large egg container that I have. Now you have got to whip some air into them, so give each egg a good mix to combine. Then you'll just put them in the freezer to harden. After they've frozen, pop them out and store them in a bag for the next year. This method allows you to easily pull out one, two, or however many eggs you need. You'll love this hack. At this point, the fresh eggs in our fridge are mostly for hard boiled eggs or the over easy eggs, which only I eat. If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start learning homesteading skills like canning and gardening in a small space and in your spare time. Now, if you're making an Easter meal, you're probably already scouting out a ham, lamb, or whatever your main dish meat is. Prices and availability can vary, and this year I was surprised where I found what, so be prepared to poke around in a few places. So right Right now, I mainly shop at Aldi and then I supplement at other grocery stores with what I can't find there. Now, I've always gotten my leg of lamb roast at a grocery store called Wegmans. If there's not one in your area, it's like a Whole Food esque regional grocery store chain, and they always have like the specialty ingredients in almost any food category. But honey, this year they didn't have my leg of lamb roast. I mean, they had the other cuts, but they didn't have the roast. But guess who did? Aldi. You can't be certain of anything anymore. Yeah, it's nuts, but Wegmans had the bone and ham for 99 cents a pound, whereas at Aldi, it was like 129. I mean, <laughs> Like I said, you're gonna have to shop around. Now, April is also an excellent time to start stockpiling your baking ingredients. That's right, darling. Baking products like sugar, spices, baking mixes, flour, chocolate chips, and refrigerated cookie dough often go on sale in April. This is perfect for our scanners because over the next couple of months, heck, even through a weekend, you can blast through a bag of sugar. So while you're already in the baking aisle, don't forget to look at a couple of the canning ingredients that you might need, like pickling spices, uh, citric acid, or shelf-stable pectin, salt, pepper. Okay y'all, so when I say stocking up, you know that I do not mean anything crazy. It is just the first week in April here, so I'm gonna keep adding like this portion to what I buy every single week. So one thing you can really blast through is uh, apple juice. And so I have uh, six containers here of apple juice that I'll go ahead and just, it's nice to know that I'll already have those, especially for, you know, like my jam and jelly uh, recipes. And then sugar, like I said, is another thing. So this time I just got some brown sugar and then I also do a lot of canning for my dad and he wants me to start using more or stevia so I got um, a bag of that a bag of regular sugar you know what I also need to get actually I already had to use a lot of it I don't know if you can tell but I have been canning some coleslaw already this weekend but then I also got you know um, some regular uh, apple cider vinegar and lemon juice all right here's the vinegar container I had to run down and get it out of recycling but if I could get maybe about 12 of these by the end of the month, I would be happy with that. So now this month, if you can, focus on your canon fixins or like the ingredients that you will commonly need for your canning recipes. Those type of items are gonna be in high demand now through August. And I just wanna have the peace of mind of knowing that I have, you know, what I need between this month and next. I don't wanna run out, you know, last minute in the middle or before a canning recipe and all that stuff. So again, if you can get those ingredients in your stockpile now, it's absolutely worth doing so. And speaking of baking, don't forget to check out your freezer cases for sales on pie crust. And y'all know I love making breakfast quiche out of any leftovers that I have for the week. And yes, I do make my own pie crust, but that's more so during the fall and the winter. But honey, it is canning season and the pendulum has swung all the way to the right and things are about to get busy. So when I saw pie crust for 99 cents, to come in a pack, there is no hesitation in throwing a few in my cart. I think I've been canning for like seven years now. So I'm really stocked on my jars. I have about 500 jars. And then the bands, um, I have so many of those. So I truly this year just needed to focus on lids. So last month I was really emphasizing to get your canning lids, rings, and jars. Because certainly now everyone is putting a rush on that. And you just wanna have the peace of mind of knowing that you already have the inventory that you need. And see y'all, I did the same. I went ahead and got an extra 400 lids. I have 200 of the regular size, and then I also got 
two of these of, of the wide mouth. All right, so believe it or not, the month of April is obsessed with pretzels. Yeah, the whole month is National Soft Pretzel Month. And then April 26th is National Pretzel Day. So be on the lookout for soft pretzel sales, as well as free pretzels all month long. In the past, Auntie Anne's, Pretzel Maker, Philly Pretzel Factory, and more all give away free pretzels. Follow your favorite pretzel brands on social media to see if they'll be giving away more this year. Now, unless there's a sale, I don't buy too many packaged snacks, but I do take advantage of pretzel sales and then I just vacuum seal and glass jars what I don't use right away. But a sweeter dessert that I came across is a make ahead frozen strawberry shortbread dessert. And it already uses two ingredients that are on sale this month, strawberries and pretzels. Start with a bag of pretzels, which are also available in gluten-free varieties and crush them. Then you're gonna add melted butter and refrigerate for about an hour for the crust to harden. Add sweet condensed milk, strawberry sauce, cream cheese, and fresh or frozen strawberries to a mixer. Finally, you're gonna fold in some whipped topping. Then take your pretzel crust out of the fridge and pour this delicious mixture on top. Place in the freezer for about four hours, but this is also the perfect make-ahead dessert that you can prep days in advance. Top with strawberries and enjoy the salty sweet combination with the crunch that'll be the perfect spring treat. Look, I usually know when you're coming over, so things are in order. But last month, you really caught me in a bind. Since I was talking about frozen food month, I was like, oh, I'll do the thumbnail in front of my freezer, in front of my basement freezer. And I have even completely admitted before that my basement freezer is usually a complete mess. But y'all, like when I open that thing up and like look at that thumbnail, even I was embarrassed. Whatever, at the end of the day, it is what it is. My basement freezer is like, throw it in there and figure it out later. Plus no one goes in that freezer but me. And I do have a system. I mean, it's not like sophisticated at all, but everything that is in that basement freezer does eventually either get used or it comes upstairs. And the things in that freezer, even though it's a mess, my stuff gets used. But with the spring and summer canning season and a garden that's going to be robust here in the next month or two and, you know, room that I need to stash my pestos and uh, fresh fruit that I want to freeze for making smoothies and extra meats that we're going to have for grilling. I had to tackle winter projects and, you know, like bits and bobs that I just had in there. I'm telling on myself because <laughs> you may be in the same boat too. Here's what my clutter looked like. Let me slowly open this door. Ugh, yikes, right? I mean, I rummage through this thing about once a week and it looks like it. I've lost food groups by categories and I've just started putting stuff anywhere. This isn't a good spot to be in and it means that I could start to forget about what I already have. All right, so here's what I pulled out of the freezer. Since I'm in a townhome with three levels, I keep a set of baskets that allow me to transport things from one level to the next. I took this basket and started to shop my freezer. This isn't everything, but it's the stuff that I needed to get out of here first. I had some chicken paws for my broths and some frozen eggs from a previous session. I used to use plastic baggies, but I switched to ice cube trays. I also had some pork chops and beef bone, frozen fennel, a two pound rockfish, all of these cocktail sausages, two little old pieces of salmon, pork fat that I needed to render into lard, and a few bags of chicken legs. So now I wanna share some delicious meals I made to give you some inspiration. I said inspiration, honey, not recipe, and I know some of y'all gonna be mad. Look, I'm just truly using what I have on hand, and so I feel like the real or the written recipe would include some ingredients that I just don't have on hand. I'm gonna keep sharing recipes on my blog, but I am also a huge advocate for already cooking with what you have on hand. Instead of saying, oh, I'm gonna dash out to the store so I have X, Y, and Z, no, like challenge yourself to pull together meals with what you already have. And that way you never have the pain of looking in your fridge or freezer and saying, man, I never got to that, or huh, now this is freezer burnt. My husband and I are gonna be enjoying a couple of days at a cabin this weekend, and a portion of these freezer meals are what I'm gonna pack and what we'll eat. I'm gonna crock pot these meals, y'all. So first up, I'm gonna take those sausage smokies and make a meal that I've shared here on the channel before, which is to take a few jars of my cranberry steak sauce and pour that on top. Once the tart and sweet flavors from the sauce marinate alongside the smokiness of the sausage, it's so good served over a bed of sauerkraut, which I'm also making.
All right, I've brought up crock pot number two, my largest size, because I'm making fish soup with the rockfish and the salmon that I have. I'm gonna make the flavors lean a bit Italian using cans of diced tomatoes, onions, peppers, and chicken broth. Next, I'm gonna dump on heaps of Italian herb blend, stir to combine, and let things get tender over the next few hours. Yep, you saw me cook this fish whole. Here's the head, which I scooped out, and then I added to my beef bone broth in my third small crock pot. I took this soup and then I placed it in a jar because this was gonna be dinner for the week. Rockfish isn't too bony, so I just had to sort out a few before spooning it in. All right, let's get to the chicken. I'm going for like a Tex-Mex Tuscan chicken, so I used a lot of taco seasoning, canned tomatoes, and condensed cream of chicken, which makes anything good. I already had sauteed diced onions in my upstairs freezer, and I threw those in along with some jalapeno peppers that I needed to use up. Then I went over to the stove and got my brown basmati rice going. Y'all, everything turned out so good and my kitchen was smelling amazing, just like I like it. I started assembling things in my freezer containers, but look at how delicious this soup turned out. Oh, it was so tender. All right, let's get these little smokies in the freezer too. Last up, we have the pork chops, which I'm going for like a sweet and tangy pork chop theme. So you can see me pouring in the pantry staples that, you know, lend to those flavors. Ketchup and barbecue sauce, molasses, brown sugar, Worcestershire, you know, those ingredients. Several hours later, the meat was so tender and this glaze just after a few taste tests came out just right. Okay, so let's get to those frozen eggs. I had a bag of fresh spinach, and then I also had a half bag of frozen tater tots. I will stuff veggies into everything, so I used what I had on hand to add like a Tex-Mex flavor to this tater tot casserole dish. Mm, this came out so good. y'all have recently been in my kitchen, you've seen me break down a turkey several times and all the ways that I use it. This was finally my last one. So I did that whole process and of course, you know, I used every part. About a year ago, I made the switch to using chicken feet for my broths. You want a spot-free foot, but if you do notice a few bumblefoot bumps, just cut them off. My word, I will link this woman's video below, but it's my friend Anna from Fermented Homestead. I recently saw that she canned her chicken feet and I thought, goodness, I should be doing the same. She has a video that will have you completely chicken certified in all things bones and broth. And she's just an excellent teacher. I processed those so that they no longer need to take up space in my freezer. Oh, just another reason why I love canning.
So this is not the first time that I've tackled cleaning out my freezer. But now that I'm on YouTube, I thought to myself, self, the farm girls on the channel are gonna be wondering what you're gonna do to organize it. So initially I thought, ooh, should I buy cooler bags or baskets? But when I thought it through, I couldn't pull the trigger because the combination of price and feasibility just didn't make sense. Your freezer, or let me just speak for myself, my freezer needs a flexible arrangement because the size of the things that I'm putting in there is always changing. So when I was shopping in Aldi, I had a eureka moment for a system that wouldn't cost me a dime. So on Aldi, they have these racks of boxes in various sizes. And I said to myself, this would be the perfect solution that I can use inside of my freezer. So if you find yourself with freezer clutter, that little hack might help you too. Yep, so I just used free boxes to group similar food items. And then also a hack that I use to quickly defrost things is to add a bowl of boiling water to steam things up and melt the ice. Now y'all, doesn't this look so much? better. Now it's been about two weeks since I've cleared the freezer and I've done good y'all. All I've added is the ham, the lamb, and the pie crusts. See? Things look mostly the same. Remember, most of my freezer meals will be eaten up next week. All right, so let's keep things moving. Earth Day is April 22nd, so expect to see a lot of natural and organic foods and personal care products, as well as reusable bags and water bottles, Energy Star appliances, CFL, and LED lighting on sale throughout the month. So here's why I'm excited about April Earth Day sales. I've previously shared, and you've likely noticed in my kitchen, that I wanna move away from disposable anything, especially plastic bags and wraps. And I've been on this journey for a few years because that's how my budget works. So I built up a small collection of the Stasher brand bags. They are the best on the market. They are the heaviest weight. Ugh, but the only thing about these is that they are a small fortune, y'all. I'm talking about for one bag. The smallest size bags are like $10 and the larger quart size ones can go for like 30 bucks. Now all you have to do is touch them to know that they're made from premium platinum silicone, which means that you can bake, microwave, boil, and freeze in them, but you really can't do that with the cheaper ones. But, and even though you can throw these in the dishwasher, I just recommend hand washing them, which is why I would say if you are not ready to kind of scale up to the Stasher brand, do what I did, which is to start with the cheaper brands, just to make sure that you are in the habit of looking after and caring for and hand washing your reusable bags. And I usually hand wash anyways, because I have cast iron and whatnot. So I actually just got this at Wegmans. I think it was like $10. I don't have this two cup uh, bowl size just yet. And I do like that it is is um, like it is stand up actually in the fridge or the freezer just like this. Let me see if I can get this out of the container. So it's perfect for like a to-go lunch, perfect to keep in the refrigerator for leftovers, um, to put it in the freezer. And like I said, this brand is, I really do enjoy them. They're just, oh, expensive. But here's where I've really seen the benefit in buying non-disposables. Once you have these items, I have really, really been able to wean myself off of plastic wrap, saran wrap, foil, and I am not buying as many disposable plastic bags. I mean, buy the dozens of uh, disposable napkins now that I use, um, you know, cloth napkins. And that is just, it has really freed my budget, right? Because now when I think about going to the grocery store, you think that you're buying food. But where I was previous to really leaning into weaning myself off disposables is at least probably a good 20% of every grocery store trip was going towards disposables, right? And not food. And now that is no longer the case. When I go to the grocery store, it is few and far between maybe that I'm picking up some extra um, you know, freezer bags to be able to uh, freeze uh, different things because I have built my inventory of these bags that are now lasting me for years. So all of that is a mouthful to say that you will see lots of your reusable kitchen items on sale this month. And if you don't get them on sale this month, the only other time you're going to see them be discounted in price is like around back to school. Other than that, the prices of these items seem to stay stubbornly stuck at full price.
So in addition to this new bag, I will probably not buy more than two or three other stasher bags and I'll just be kind of like priced out for the year. But I have found some other workarounds to increase the number of reusable just like containers that I have in my kitchen um, that are a lot cheaper. So one of the um, items that I bought, and I'll make sure that I include links for all this stuff um, in the description box below, is, and y'all have seen me use these. So I actually got, I love that these have lids. I don't know exactly what you call these things. They're like extra large um, ice cube trays. And these are like super perfect for freezing a variety of things, right? Like my eggs, my pestos, um, like small portions of ingredients that I want to have like at the ready, my butters that I'm going to go ahead and make. And then I absolutely love that they already have, you know, the lid that's here. So then that way I don't have to worry about, you know, keeping it in a certain spot or, you know, I can easily stack them in the freezer or the fridge. So I absolutely love that I have these on hand. And then what I also realized is aside from like, meat sometimes I'm looking for a bag because I have something that's more of like um, casserole or soup or broth kind of based and I don't always need it to be in a bag I just need it to be in a container and so I found two sizes of um, I don't two sizes of like these containers so there's like a heavy plastic lid that's here and then oh I am so super excited about these look y'all oh my goodness like this is excellent right so like the bone broths that I make I can just like pour them in here pop them out um small different like single serving casseroles or like whatever it is so I'm, I'm excited to have something like this on hand i went and i got two of them as you saw when i'm not using them they're going to store super um easily so i have two sizes of those and then i actually got um this which is basically the same thing as this but it's a group of four and so i just I'm really excited about having these kinds of options for different uh, whatnots for freezing my herbs, small little like meatloaf things or like whatever else. So with all that I've purchased, and like I said, maybe two or three more stasher bags, I'm really excited going into this year that this one time initial investment will be with me for years on end. I'm keeping plastics out of the landfill and I just always have options um, for, you know, storing whatever I need. All right, so now I wanna talk about some canning items that may not be on your list, but I suspect those of us that have been canning for a while probably just do and we don't even think about it. Look, summer kitchens are hot places even if you have central air. Because of this, I actually do a lot of canning early in the morning or late at night. And whenever I wanna bake something, unless it's a larger quantity, Quantity, I actually use a small toaster oven that I keep in the basement. So if it's in a cast iron pan anytime during the summer in this kitchen, but it looks like I'm taking it out of this oven, honey, please know that it was staged and really I am using my downstairs oven. And I say this to you because I know that a number of y'all are just like me and you're food preserving in a small space. And when I was in an apartment, I lived on the third floor, which was the top floor of this apartment uh, complex. And so during the summer, you know, heat rises and sometimes even with the air it was just unbearable and so instead of using my like full-sized regular oven I just started using this toaster oven and oh my goodness that was just so helpful with not having to you know add so much heat so yeah you might want to switch the time of day where you do most of your canning to early in the morning or at night get a smaller toaster oven and then Consider getting yourself a pair of canning shoes. I am a comfort shoe queen because I am on my feet most of the day at work. But the same is true also inside of my home. Now, I am one of those people, I was raised in a home where your shoes come off at the door and you either slide into a pair of slippers or socks or house shoes. 
And the same is true for canning. So the reality is, is that there are some days where I am in my kitchen for hours. And so you're on your feet uh, during that time. And one of the things that I know has kind of helped with either, you know, restless leg syndrome or just standing for hours at a time is to actually have a pair of shoes that are only worn inside of the house. That way you're not tracking, you know, what's outside in and vice versa. Y'all at my thrift store again, I came across the perfect canning shoe and let me show you what I mean. Take a look at these puppies, y'all. Oh my goodness. So first off, they're by the brand Eddie Bauer, which is a really good shoe brand. And what I like about them is that here's what they look like, y'all, right? I took these literally off the rack. They hardly show any signs of wear. I am going to wash these after I share them with you. Uh, but these were also 50% off the full price. As you can see, there was $9.49. So, I mean, I paid a little bit over four bucks for them. And they have, they're easy to slip on, slip off. I don't have to fuss with laces, any of that stuff. They have these little tabs here to help me, you know, slide my foot inside and out. I like that they have, you know, the elastic here. My feet are actually kind of narrow and these shoes kind of run that way. And then they do have, you know, just moderate in here, uh, arch support. I'm not flat footed, but even so, like it's a supportive shoe. Um, my foot won't get, you know, hopefully too hot in these. And so you would not believe. Now I know that, um, what do you call those mats? I know that four jars just came out with a mat. They're like, you know, the, the, the mats that you can put underneath of like your sink and your stove. And I, I totally get it, right? Totally get it. Um, I'm not saying anything, uh, you know, wrong with uh, those mats. But for me, I'm always like, okay, great. But I'm not just exclusively standing in front of my stove, right? I'm running over to like, you know, this cabinet over there, you know, uh, standing in front of here, washing dishes, putting stuff away, going downstairs to get my canning, you know, supplies and inventories and jars, bringing them back up, you know, like that kind of thing. And also intermittently, you know, during uh, doing chores around the house. So I have just found um, that if you need something to give you that extra kind of um, boost or just to be more comfortable while you are doing, not even just canning, we can call these even like just housework shoes, um, dedicating a pair of shoes that you wear inside. I love that idea. Like I absolutely love it. I remember a couple of years ago, actually it's more than a couple of years now. I think it was probably like, a teenager or such. Again, um, we would only wear uh, house socks or like your slippers inside the house. And so like no shoes. And my mom was just like so strict about that because uh, most of our house was like carpeted and stuff like that too. Anyways, there was one time where I think I, I came in the house and mom had her shoes on. And I was like, oh, you have your shoes on. And she was like, these are my house shoes. I only wear them inside of the house uh, because they just gave her, her feet so much more uh, comfort and support. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. Lo and behold, all these years later, it's just another way that I'm becoming more like my mama. And I totally am taking her idea. And now um, I have a good pair of house slippers, but having house shoes now is something that I'm, I'm really excited about. <laughs> Now, some of y'all might also be interested in the Easter clearance sales. Now, y'all know that I love sending snail mail cards. So one of the things that I'm always rummaging through are the Easter clearance cards. So, yep, that means the cards that I'm sending this year are actually cards that I got on clearance last year. April also kicks off linen season. So about three years ago, I really started to incorporate linen as a fabric into my summer and spring capsule wardrobe. And this was honestly just because I realized that I needed a more comfortable fabric to do the things that I enjoy doing the most, which is being outside in my garden for hours at a time or hiking. So, you know, I was looking for something that was breathable, but then also cover my arms and my skin from the sun and protect me from, you know, insects. Linen is highly absorbent and breathable and it has excellent moisture wicking properties. Its durability and longevity outlast other fabrics by decades. It's eco-friendly, sustainable, and very low maintenance. It has holistic health benefits and the list just goes on. Y'all know that I am a chronic thrifter and basically 100% of my wardrobe is from the thrift store. And so this is also the time of year
here in early spring and at the very end of the summer when they're kind of switching over fabrics to fine quality linen. Now I maybe have about seven or eight linen tops, but I just recently scored three additional linen items that, I mean, wow, I just really hit the jackpot. And I've even started to find some linen items for my boys, my husband and my dad. <laughs> Hey, hey mom, hey. let me show you my latest finds from the thrift store. All right, mom, I found this two-piece set. It's by the brand Flax. Look at this gorgeous purple linen color. And then it, it beautiful. Yes, and then it has like mm -hmm. the button details where you can like roll it up and uh, cinch up the sleeves. It comes down, I mean like mid-thigh on me. I just love that. And mm -hmm. then, the pockets or the pants have pockets. Oh, the pants. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess they're like capris, really. Elastic right. waist, oh my gosh, gorgeous. Then mom, oh my goodness, I have just, this is by the brand Eileen Fisher. <sighs> Look at this gorgeous, like light pink uh, blazer. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, again, the sleeves are rolled, nice and light. It's like a neutral. Pockets in the front. What? Oh my gosh, what a blessing. And this was 50% off of $7.99. I like, mom, come on now. How did you wash it? I'm it. As regular. So you can just wash linen and really you, it's best to air dry it, but it is a super durable fabric. This is another blazer I found by Talbot's. I've already washed and worn this one. I mean, yeah. again, just gorgeous nice pockets the pockets in this one you can't really see but oh so right. nice yeah for either Trey or dad you know they can kind of go back and forth between sizes so this right. shirt was $11.99 I think it was also 50% off it's by Perry Ellis and I tried to just like button it together and do like the little belly test <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I don't I don't know I like I feel I don't know. I, I feel like this is going to fit dad, but look, mom, look at the detailing here. Do you see yeah, this? See. And the pockets are nice here. And I love this color. And then mm -hmm. these are the pants by Under Armour, which is such a nice brand. Look, mm -hmm. these are really nice. I love this khaki color. They're like a, a nice cool fabric that Trey will really like. Good right. pockets. Right. It's a combination of you can wear it with a belt, but then it also has um, some elastic here in the waist. I scored this long linen shirt for him already at the end of the season. Oh, I canceled coleslaw, you see back there? Finally, friends, if you need a way to organize and inventory your canned pantry, I have a downloadable pantry planner that is a simple way to track your goodies. There are lots of helpful references that you'll need, and you can easily customize the pages. I'll include a link in the description box below. out on any of the other pantry chats this year and you want to catch up, click the video that's on your screen. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends.